Hey all, uh, this is a follow-up video from my Bricks Builder Query Loop Anything from any API. Uh, I had some feedback, which is something I hadn't considered, where if your API returns a, a value in the, uh, in the looped array, uh, which has an indexed array. So you can see here we've got these little square brackets here. What that is, is we've got one, two, three, four, five, six ingredients. Uh, in an indexed array. So this would come across have a, having an array index of 0 through 2, 5, uh, not a associative array, which is what the actual um, recipe in this case would come back. So an associative array, our ID has a scalar value of 1, our name has a uh, scalar value of classic margarita pizza, our ingredients has a indexed array of uh, six values. So that there is not going to work with the code that we put up there a couple of days ago because uh, Bricks isn't going to know how to display that indexed array. So what I've done is you could create a second uh, Bricks query loop uh, and have that as a sub loop and get this value and loop through that. Um, it's a bit of work to do. I'm not going to do that today. I'm going to instead, I'm going to provide a different option, which is uh, a way of telling the dynamic tag that this value we expect that to be an index array. So we want to return a UL with these as allies. Uh, the second way would be to provide what we call a formatter callback where we can decide how is this going to be returned. It will need to be returned as HTML so that you can stick it into the value in uh, bricks, um, but uh, you can decide how that's going to be formatted. So having a look at WP code box here, and this gets a bit tricky when everything's zoomed in here. So I'm not sure if you guys can see this very well because the coloring here in, in uh, WP code box, but what I've done is I've added two more attributes that you can use. So we've got this at is underscore indexed. Uh, if that exists at all, um, or if it's set to true, um, then it will uh, return an HTML UL for that indexed array. If this is non-existent whatsoever, it expects it to be a scalar value. Okay, so it will return the scalar. So you know, meaning you know, it could be a boolean, could be a string, could be a integer, whatever it is. It's a scalar value. Which scalars have a single uh, value. So that's what's going to be returned if we don't have this is index. So this is just a flag to say, hey, we're expecting this to be an index array. All right. The other alternative I've added is a formatter callback. So at formatter, and that's a callback function that you define. Now this will take precedence over that. So if you say is index and then you provide a formatter, it's going to call the callback function, not the function that uh, that just gives us an HTML UL. So that's what I've decided to do. Now if we have a look in the actual code here. So what I've done is uh, in my uh, first one, which is my instructions, uh, I've got my same dynamic tag, same key path, but I've added this is index colon true, and what that returns is a bullet list. And if we look at the HTML for that, let's just go to the front end. So my bullet list, I've got a, a BEM block name I've given it at the top there. I've given my allies, each of my allies, a BIM element off the block. Uh, and then I'll put a data list index uh, value in there um, so that you can style these however you want. So in Bricks, you just create a new class for that and you target the elements with that. Um, and you can style this up however you want in Bricks. Okay. And you, we could add some additional properties there so we can stick some ARIA attributes on this UL if we wanted to. So again, this is starter code. Like, don't think this is an absolute endpoint solution. Uh, this is really just to get you started. And depending on what data you're expecting, what APIs you're using, you might have to modify this a little bit. Um, so this isn't a one-size-fits-all. It's a one-size-fits-most scenarios, but you're going to have to do some work if you want to make it specific for you. All right, so that's the default. That's going to happen if we've got our example here, where in that case we've got ingredients, and we've told, I think it was an ingredients we we're looking at. 
it is. We've got ingredients and the ingredients returns a indexed array. All we've done is told that that it is an indexed array. So it is indexed equal, uh, colon true. And that's all we've had to do with that. If we have a look at the ingredients, uh, what we've done here, instead of uh, all the rest is exactly the same. Instead of saying it is indexed, we've provided a formatter callback. I'm just calling this WPE test formatter. And if we have a look at the uh, instructions, what we'll see in the instructions, oh, that's not right there. It's maybe I haven't saved. Refresh. Yep, I hadn't saved. So in this case, what we've done, the only thing I've done here is made that an OL. So I'll turn that into an OL using our callback function, and we get our same same thing here. We get a block name, and we get our elements of our allies with our data list index. And how I've done that, let's have a look at the WP code box. So is indexed. Is. Let's have a look at the first one here. So here we go. So here's my... Uh, Uh, da, 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 render deep array from loop. Yep, that's my callback for, for that. So what we're going to do here is we look for a, if our attribute is index is set. So we've got the at is index and the attribute uh, equals true. Now, because we're putting this into a value in a input in bricks, it's not a Boolean true, it's a string true. So we're just going to do a loose comparison with two equals rather than three. Um, could make it uh, three equals, so it's a absolute comparison, but that makes it a loose comparison. So either true uh, Boolean or true string is going to match. Okay, so if that is set, we're going to say this is expected to be an indexed array as our result that we've get, value that we've got. So down here, um, we're just basically doing exactly the same as what we did before, and we're sending through is index to our uh, uh, WP dot notation from current loop object as a as a uh, property. Uh, and the same with our formatter. If our formatter is not empty, uh, then we're going to set our formatter to whatever that value is. Otherwise, we're going to set it to a null. Okay, so you can add your own properties in here. This is the point of having this as a uh, starter code. You can add your own attributes very easily and then just come and edit the code to say what happens when I put that attribute in there. Okay, so in this case, we're going to call our dot notation from current loop object and we're going to pass in is index and formatter. So down here, we, this is just calling the, uh, the main function here. So all we're doing is grabbing those two values defaulting the is index to false, uh, and uh, we're just calling our dot notation uh, function here, passing again those values in. So in here, what we're doing is we get the same deal. So all this is the same. We're still just getting a value from our key path. If we have a formatter, we're going to call the user return, call user function formatter with our source array. So basically it's going to send our source array to the callback formatter that we specified in here okay and that's the that's the default so if the formatter is defined it ends here okay if that's not defined and is indexed array is is true then we're going to call our wp indexed array to list Otherwise, we return our scalar value. So these, this is not expected to be an array at all. We're just going to return our scalar value here. Okay, so let's have a look at the indexed array to list. So we've made this as a function uh, with some defaults. So it's our array. What type do you want it to be? What class name do you want it to have? Uh, if it's not an array, return an error. Okay, if it is indexed, if, we, if, it's, if is indexed um, is... Sorry, uh, this is a utility function where it just double checks to make sure that is an indexed array. Uh, we then give a block name to our uh, class and then the type. So this would be our block name for that would be WPE API index array UL uh, by default. 
Okay, and then we're just going to loop through the array and create a uh, UL with the allies in it. That's pretty simple, isn't it? Then we return the HTML. Now, our test formatter, all we're doing on our test formatter at this stage is this WPE test formatter. All we're doing on that is calling this function here with the array, and we're calling the same function, but we're telling it to be an OL. Okay, so the second parameter or property that we uh, pass in is the type, and we just tell it to be an OL. If we wanted a different class name, we could put a different class name there. Uh, and this could be a completely different function. So you may want to deal with this completely. You want to, might want to output it as a table. Uh, you might want to, you know, if it's an associative array, uh, you might want to treat it differently. You might want to treat it in your formatter. You might uh, want to do a label value uh, uh, as spans or as a table, or whatever you want. But your test formatter, all it has to do is loop through that array and then return HTML to display in Bricks. So that is it in a nutshell. I think it solves the problem quite nicely because uh, the alternative is that you're going to have to create a sub loop in here. So you're going to have to maybe another block there uh, and that would be a loop. And then you'd have to have another sub query. So this in here, uh, uh, da, da, da. in here, you'd have to have the dummy JSON. You have to create another one, which would be your sub query for your indexed array. Um, Totally doable, but I don't think you need to at this stage. So uh, I'm going to leave this video here. I think that explains it as, as much as I need to explain it. I have updated the uh, code on the gist. So if you want to go there and grab that, the uh, the only code that has changed is the WPE common code. Uh, and uh, that's it. So that is the end of this tutorial. Hope that makes sense. Uh, I must say that um, I will be time poor for the next couple of months because we are making a move to Thailand and tidying everything up. So we leave Australia in a couple of weeks. So um, my availability will be a little bit limited uh, with uh, with this. So uh, I'll try and respond where I can. But um, yeah, I might not always be available. All right, guys, thanks for listening. If you like this, hit the subscribe, hit the like. Thank you.